The Intel i7-8700K and i7-8086K CPUs are both extremely similar. They've got the same core count, but the 8086K comes with higher clock speeds out of the box and costs a fair bit more, but as a better binned chip should in theory be able to reach higher overclocks and perform better. So let's compare the two and find out which is worth buying. Let's start with the differences in specs. Both CPUs have the same 6 cores and 12 threads, and are based on Coffee Lake. They've got the same TDP, same cache, and same everything except for the clock speeds. Where the 8086K appears to have higher clock speeds. I say appears because there's more to it than what first meets the eye. These are the clock speeds each CPU will run at based on the number of CPU cores that are in use. Both the 8086K and 8700K have the same clock speeds when they've got between 2 and all 6 cores active. The only time we get a difference is in single core, where the 8086K can boost to 5GHz while the 8700K boosts to 4.7GHz. That's the key difference in clock speeds. The 8086K is apparently a better bin chip though, so we may be able to manually overclock it better. Otherwise for the most part, the main idea behind the 8086K is that it's a limited edition collector's item to celebrate Intel's 40th anniversary of the 8086 processor. To see how these differences practically affect games and applications, I've tested them both in the exact same system. I'm using the MSI Z390 Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard. As both CPUs have the same socket, there's no need to swap. I've got 16GB of TeForce Nighthawk CL16 memory running a DDR4 3200 in dual channel. And for the graphics, I'm using my Aorus 2080 Ti in order to minimise any GPU bottlenecks. I'm cooling the CPUs using my Fractal S36 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler, with the same Noctua NTH1 thermal paste. So the exact same PC was used for testing both the 8700K and 8086K CPUs, as apples to apples as things come. As for overclocks, I was able to get the 8700K to 5.0GHz on all 6 cores with 1.33V. And with the same 1.33V, I could get the 8086K to 5.1GHz. With that in mind, let's check out the games first, followed by CPU specific benchmarks like Cinebench and Adobe Premiere afterwards. I've tested all games at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K resolutions using the same Nvidia driver version and Windows updates installed. Fortnite was tested using the replay feature. Starting at 1080p, we're seeing very high frame rates with either CPU. At stock, the 8086K was performing 5% better in average frame rates compared to the 8700K, but with both CPUs overclocked, it was just 2% ahead. Stepping up to 1440p still saw very high frame rates, although almost no difference between them now, regardless of overclocks, as the CPU becomes less important at higher resolutions. At 1440p in all cases, the 8700K was actually ahead here. At 4K, the game was still playable, as it's pretty well optimised. At stock, the results were very similar, and then while overclocked, the 8086K was 1.2% ahead. Battlefield 5 was tested with and without ray tracing enabled. At 1080p with high settings, it was still very playable with RTX on, averaging high 80fps with either CPU, although the 8700K was ahead. With RTX off, the average frame rate is around twice as high, shown by the blue bars, but again slightly better results with the 8700K. At 1440p, the game was still playable at high settings with ray tracing on, averaging over 60fps. At stock, the 8700K was slightly ahead, but once both CPUs were overclocked, the 8086K was getting 1.8% higher average frame rates with RTX on, and 1.6% better with RTX off. At 4K, RTX wasn't playable any longer with high settings, and at stock the 8700K was ahead of the stock 8086K, while the overclocked 8086K was then ahead of the overclocked 8700K. Far Cry 5 was tested using the built-in benchmark. At 1080p, with the CPUs at stock, the 8086K was getting 2.2% higher average frame rates, but a much larger 5% improvement to 1% lows when compared with the 8700K. Once overclocked though, there's much less of a difference to 1% lows between the two CPUs. However, we can see a fair improvement when comparing the stock and overclocked results. At 1440p, the difference starts to become less obvious as we get more GPU bound, with the 8086K now 2% ahead of the 8700K at stock speeds, and just 0.9% higher average FPS once both have been overclocked. At 4K, the differences are quite minimal, especially while overclocked, 
At stock settings, we saw a 2.6% higher average frame rate with the 8086K, but then almost no difference with both overclocked, with the 8086K now just 0.1% ahead in average FPS. CSGO was tested with the Eletical benchmark, and at 1080p there was almost no difference at stock, with a slightly larger 1.6% improvement to the 8086K once the overclocks are applied. At 1440p, the 8086K was 1.1% in front of the 8700K at stock, and then 1.3% ahead once both have been overclocked, but slightly better 1% low results from the 8700K. At 4K, the frame rates are still quite high for this test. Basically the same average frame rates at stock, and then largest improvements out of all games tested at 4K, with the 8086K 2.2% ahead of the 8700K. Rainbow Six Siege was tested using the built-in benchmark. At 1080p, with the CPUs at stock, the 8086K was just 0.3% ahead in terms of average frame rate, and then a slightly higher 1.4% difference with the 8086K in front. A similar deal at 1440p. The 8086K was just 0.08% ahead at stock, so margin of error realistically. Then the 8086K is 0.2% ahead with both CPUs overclocked. At 4K, there was almost no difference between both CPUs, regardless of if they were running at stock speeds or overclocked, as higher resolutions tend to be more GPU bound. Overwatch was tested in the practice range. At 1080p, even with ultra settings, we're still hitting the 300 FPS cap, although we can see some improvements to the 1% lows with the CPU overclocks applied. At stock, the 1% low from the 8086K is 3% ahead of the 8700K. But then once overclocked, the results are closer together, with the 8086K now just 0.2% ahead. Even at 1440p, we're only just below the 300 FPS cap, and the averages are all very close together, still with more differences noted between 1% low results. Similar results to 1080p in that sense, where once overclocked, results move closer together. At 4K with stock settings, the 8086K was actually consistently slower, though at 160 FPS and ultra settings at this resolution, this will of course make no real difference. With both CPUs overclocked though, the 8086K is now just 0.9% ahead of the 8700K. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was tested with the built-in benchmark. At 1080p, the 8086K was just 0.2% ahead in terms of average frame rate, and then this increases slightly to 0.4% ahead with both CPUs overclocked. At 1440p, the 8086K was just ahead in all tests. Interestingly, even at stock it was beating the 8700K in 1% low and very close in averages. At 4K, the results get even closer together. No real difference between either CPU, but still pretty good frame rates at this resolution with high settings, thanks to the 2080 Ti and these powerful CPUs. PUBG was tested using the replay feature, and at 1080p we can see straight away that overclocking is making a fair difference. Not so much of a change between the two CPUs though. While overclocked, both are performing very closely, while at stock the 8700K was scoring 4.7% higher average FPS. At 1440p, the 8700K was still giving higher average frame rates at stock, although a smaller 1.2% gap this time, and then extremely close with both overclocked, too close to call. Finally at 4K, there's much less of a difference between all results now, as we become GPU bound. Even at high settings with this hardware, these are pretty decent results for this resolution. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested using the built-in benchmark. At 1080p with high settings, there was almost no difference between both CPUs. One FPS difference at stock, then the same results once both are overclocked. Similar results at 1440p. Still high frame rates, but the 8700K was slightly ahead at stock, but with both overclocked they were identical. Again, quite similar at 4K, although while overclocked, the 8086K was now one frame per second ahead and this was consistent over multiple test runs. Watch Dogs 2 was tested as it's a fairly resource demanding game. At stock, the 8086K was achieving 1.2% higher average frame rates compared to the 8700K, although a much larger comparatively 8.6% improvement to 1% low. With both overclocked, the 8086K is now a massive 6.8% ahead of the 8700K, and I use the word massive there sort of jokingly, but it's the largest improvement we see throughout all games tested. At 1440p, the results start getting closer together, with the 8086K being just 0.6% ahead of the 8700K at stock settings. But once both are overclocked, it's the 8700K which is now 1.2% ahead of the 8086K. At 4K, the results get much closer together as the difference in CPU is less of a factor, all performing around 60 FPS, 
So as we've seen, the differences are pretty minimal. Starting at 1080p with both CPUs at stock, on average there's almost no difference. With the 8086K on average coming out 0.01% ahead in terms of average frame rate. This of course varies depending on the game. For instance, Fortnite seemed more sensitive to the difference in CPU, while Overwatch was basically the same. If we swap over to the overclocked results, we can see that the 8086K is now just 0.55% better on average. In almost all cases now, it's performing slightly ahead of the 8700K compared to both at stock. Most likely as the overclock was 100MHz higher, but still, realistically, these differences wouldn't even be noticeable while playing the games. Looking at results from 1440p with stock settings, again there was basically no difference. On average, the 8086K was actually behind the 8700K in these games. With the overclocks in place, the scales tipped towards the 8086K being slightly better, coming out 0.5% ahead of the 8700K, with most games seemingly favouring that slight 100MHz overclock. At 4K, with both CPUs at stock, there was once more no major differences. Although on average, the 8086K was slightly behind the 8700K. Either way, yet again, it depends on the specific game. With both CPUs overclocked, the 8086K is now just 0.7% ahead of the 8700K with most games favouring it now, compared to the stock results we just saw. As you've hopefully been able to see, there's no real difference between these two CPUs when it comes down to gaming performance. They both trade blows with each other depending on the game and if overclocks are applied. I didn't expect the 8700K to come out ahead in as many tests as it did, given the lower clock speed. Though realistically, a lot of the results are within margin of error ranges anyway. I did of course try to reduce this by taking averages from multiple test runs. But I think this just further illustrates that there's minimal difference between the two when it comes to gaming. Now let's move away from gaming and check out some CPU specific benchmarks. I've tested both CPUs at stock and with the same overclocks. So 5.0 GHz for the 8700K and 5.1 GHz for the 8086K. Starting out with Cinebench, I've taken the average of 5 runs. I've got the 8700K at stock at the bottom of the graph, followed by the 5 GHz all core overclock, then same with the 8086K above it. Stock then with its 5.1 GHz overclock. In the multi-core test at stock, I was actually getting slightly better scores with the 8700K. But with both overclocked, the 8086K is 2.4% ahead of the 8700K. In terms of single core performance, at stock the 8086K is 3.1% ahead of the 8700K, but then with both overclocked just 1.3% ahead. Which makes sense when you consider that at stock the 8086K has a 300MHz higher single core turbo speed than only a 100MHz difference once overclocked. Adobe Premiere was tested using the newest CC 2019 version. I've just exported one of my laptop reviews at 1080p using the built-in high bitrate preset. At stock speeds, the 8086K is able to complete the task almost 6% faster than the 8700K, and then with both overclocked, the gap closes significantly, completing within a second of each other. I've also tested Adobe Premiere's Warp Stabilizer, just stabilizing one 4K clip at a time, and this task seems to favor single core performance. At stock speeds, the 8086K is completing the task just 5 seconds faster, or 1.7% quicker compared to the 8700K. With both CPUs overclocked, the difference was just a couple of seconds, or 0.7%, so almost no practical difference here. Blender was tested using the BMW and Classroom benchmarks, and the 8086K was just a few seconds quicker than the 8700K in all tests. In most cases, we're talking less than a percent improvement, with the largest difference seen once overclocked in the Classroom benchmark where the 8086K at 5.1GHz was 1.9% faster than the 8700K at 5.0GHz. 7-Zip was used to test compression and decompression speeds, and the differences here were very small between the two chips. There was a large boost by applying the overclocks though. For instance, the 8700K scores 15% better for decompression and 17% better for compression once overclocked to 5GHz on all cores. Interestingly, the compression speed at stock with the 8086K was a fair bit lower compared to the 8700K. I'm not sure what the deal was there, but this was always reproducible in my test system. Veracrypt was used to test AES encryption and decryption speeds, and I saw lower results on both CPUs with the overclocks applied. I've seen this in the past though, I'm not really sure why it happens with this application. In any case, the 8700K was slightly faster here, 
and while I did take the average of 5 test runs, the results can be fairly sporadic. Handbrake was used to convert a 4K video to 1080p, and then a separate 1080p file to 720p. At stock speeds, both CPUs were performing very closely, with a slight edge to the 8700K. And this was the case for both the 4K file, shown in the blue bar, and 1080p file, shown in the purple bar. Once both are overclocked, the 8086K pulls out ahead, now 2.5% ahead of the 8700K in the 4K test, and 3% faster in the 1080p test. The Corona benchmark uses the CPU to render a scene, and there was only a second difference at stock speed, putting the 8700K just ahead. With both overclocked, the 8086K was now completing the same task just over 3% faster than the 8700K. The V-Ray benchmark gave us similar results to what we just saw in Corona, exactly the same results between both CPUs at stock, and then just 2% quicker once both CPUs are overclocked, making the 8086K 2.5% faster now. Interestingly in most cases, at stock speeds the 8700K is slightly ahead of the 8086K, although once overclocked the 8086K comes out ahead in all tests with its superior speed that I was able to run it at with the same voltage, as it's probably a better binned chip. These are the temperatures of both CPUs at stock and while overclocked while running a Blender benchmark with an ambient room temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. At stock the 8086K was just slightly cooler. My guess is as a better binge chip it may be better in that regard. However once both were overclocked the same 90 degrees Celsius was reached. But again worth remembering the 8086K did have a higher overclock. I've measured total system power draw from the wall. And with Blender running at stock, the system was using the same amount of power. There was just an extra 10 watts in use by the 8086K once overclocked, as it had an extra 100 MHz on all 6 cores. For updated pricing for either CPU, check the links in the description, as prices will change over time. At the time of recording, the 8700K goes for $370 US dollars, while the 8086K is $490, so an extra $120 US dollars or a 32% price increase. At this point, you might as well get the 9900K for $40 extra. Here's a quick price to performance graph based on the Cinebench multi-core results. We can see that there's basically no major difference between the two in terms of score, but a fair bit of extra cost for the 8086K. If you've got the cash and either want a limited edition CPU or otherwise want to roll the dice on a potentially better overclock, then it may be worth it. But for most people, I think the 8700K is offering extremely similar levels of performance for quite a fair bit less money. Basically, when it comes down to it, for most people, just get the 8700K and save the money, as they perform very similarly. Most people just want best performance for their dollar, and likely aren't all that interested in buying a collector's item. With that said, let me know which of these two CPUs you'd pick and why down in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more CPU comparisons. I've got the 9600K and 9700K here for testing.